So I'm sharing my screen now. So so we were discussing about the literals concept so in literals in literals we discussed about the character literals we discussed about the character literals and we discussed about the byte the boolean literals we discussed about the boolean literals so now <clears throat> we'll discuss about you know some of the other literals that we have today also we'll do we'll discuss about the literals concept only so so today we'll discuss about integral literals we'll discuss about the integral literals so very important <clears throat> integral literals So we discussed about care literals, Boolean literals. Now we'll discuss about integral literals. Okay. So <clears throat> the integral literals. So these integral literals can be assigned to. These can be assigned to <clears throat> integral type of data. Integral type of data. So what it means what it what it means by integral type of data means you can assign these integral literals to byte byte type variables you can assign these integral literals to <coughs> short type variables you can assign these to int and you can assign this to long type variables so integral literals can be assigned to byte short int and long okay any of this so so the size of the literal okay the size of the the integral the integral the integral literal size is always depend on the the type of data that you are using for example if you are using byte if you are using byte so 20 for example if i take 20 the number 20 if i if i assign this value 20 to byte then in memory you will get only one byte of memory will be occupied one one byte of memory will be occupied by your jvm if the same 20 if i assign it to short if i assign it to short it will take two bytes if it takes two bytes if the same if i assign it to int it takes four bytes the same thing if it goes too long then it takes eight bytes right it takes <coughs> eight bytes okay so the size of that in the size of the memory size of that the memory size of that data type the memory size of that data type always depends on the always de always depends on the type that you choose the type that you choose okay so you have to choose you have to choose the data types very carefully you have to choose the data type very carefully in case if you do some mistake for example you want to store a value called 20 if you want to store the value called 20 20 can be stored in the byte type right the range of byte is minus 128 to 127 in case if you are not doing that and if you are going and storing it inside integer okay if you are going and storing in that in, inside an integer right then what happens <coughs> Then what happens so it will allot four bytes of memory it will allot four bytes of memory so <clears throat> what if the same 20 if you store it inside long if you store inside long then it will allot eight bytes of memory eight bytes of memory right so so unnecessarily we are wasting the memory we are, we are wasting the resources there it is it is not that you cannot assign the 20 value too long you can do that but that is a bad practice that is a bad practice because the range you look at the range okay the value you look at the 
number range the number range is very less the number range is very less so if you if you use smaller type if you use smaller type smaller data type there may be a chance this value in your program can change to 300 also at some point of time right there may be a chance so 20 right now i am taking the value as 20 but what if the value gets updated to 300 in your program if i choose byte if i choose byte then i'll have a problem right i cannot store that in one byte so if then i have to go and change that to short i have to go and update my code i have to go and update my code and i have to recompile my code recompile my code so not to have such kind of problems if i go with the with the higher type if i go with the higher type which is of long type which is of long type when i am doing that what is happening i am wasting the memory here i am wasting the memory so i cannot go with the lower type with the lower data types or even the higher data type with the higher data type right so for that reason for that reason what J, what java people has done is the people who has developed java is they fixed they fixed one data type as they fixed one data type as okay default data type in java okay when it comes to integral literals or when it comes to the all the data types of integer integral integral uh, data types when it comes to the integral data types one lit one data type they fixed as default data type in java what is that is integer integer is the default type right the default data type in in java for integral literals is int because it is exactly in the middle it is exactly in the middle so it is it will take four bytes okay it will take four bytes okay you you gave it as <clears throat> even though which means the byte type data can be stored in int the short type data can be stored in int okay any of these ranges can be stored inside integer okay if you really need if you really really need a longer type then you can go for long type then you can go for long type okay so integral literals basically integral literals can be assigned to the integral data types they can be assigned to integral data types so which means it can be assigned to byte short int or long int okay only for these and always the memory size depends on the data type that you choose the data type that you choose and the third option that is the third option that is int is the int is the default data type for integral literals for integral literals okay <clears throat> so so any number it can be a positive number or it can be a negative number you can take plus 20 or minus 20 or minus 200 or minus 400 anything you take anything the default type the default type what your what your java considers is integer it is a integer whether it's a signed 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 in literal or it's an unsigned literal anything it can be okay and and when it comes to the integral literals when it comes to the integral literals there are four different ways to there are four different ways to represent this there are four different ways to represent this integral data types integral data types can be represented in four types okay what are the four different ways how, how what are the four different formats or different types that we have in in java if you ask me what are those four types is the data can be represented in the decimal format it can be in the decimal format it can be represented in the octal format it can be represented in the octal format 
and it can be represented in the hexadecimal format. It can be represented in the hexadecimal format and it can be represented in the binary format. Binary format. So you take any liter any integral literals. The integral literals can be assigned to only these four data types, which is int, which is like byte, char, sorry, byte, short, int, and long. Int and long. And and if you take there are four different formats where you can represent these integral data types. So one is the decimal format, octal format, hexadecimal, and binary. Hexadecimal and binary. So <clears throat> decimal format. So how do we represent the decimal format? Okay. So basically, you know that it's a decimal number system. It follows. It is a this this, this is a valid number from the decimal de decimal format. Or decimal number system like any normal numbers 20 22 30 35 anything like this these are normal numbers okay so there is some rules for this there is some rules for this what are those rules is the decimal number must be formed within with, with the numbers from 0 to 9 decimal means 10 right decimal numbers has to be formed formed within this using this 0 to 9 numbers only 0 to 9 numbers and so it it looks like we are we are dealing with some seventh class standard or sixth class standard classes but these there are some there are some rules behind it okay when it when you when we discuss about other formats you will understand this so these are the rules for the decimal format Okay, so it follows the decimal number system format and the numbers has to be formed formed with okay using 0 to 9. So from 0 to 9, you can use any of these numbers and you can frame it. Okay, and one rule to remember, one rule to remember decimal number, your decimal format numbers, your decimal format numbers, should not start with shouldn't start with zero okay this is very important the decimal format that when you are representing the decimal format numbers in java you should not start the numbers with zero for example 25 if i take the number 25 this is a decimal format number this is a decimal format number if i add zero to five Actually, for us, it looks the same value. 0 to 5, 0 has no value, which means it is equivalent to 225. But for Java, it is not the case. For Java, it is not the case. This is not a decimal format. This is not decimal format. It, it, it should not start with, it must not start with 0. Okay, that's the rule. That's the rule. So any number that you frame, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, any number that you take all these are all these are decimal numbers okay now the second type of literals what we have in the the second type of format that is octal format the second format is the octal format the second format is octal format so do remember that when you are following decimal it must not start with zero okay so when you are representing any numbers any integral numbers in octal format okay so it, it so when you are starting when you are representing any numbers in octal format then the numbers will be picked from octal number system octal number system so decimal decimal number system decimal decimal number system so decimal numbers range is like you have to use from 0 to 9 you can use 0 to 9 numbers and frame it and it should not start with it should not start with 0 so when when you are representing in octal format you you have to choose the pick the numbers from octal number system octal number system which means octa means 8 deci means 10 
So the radix, the radix of the base, base or the radix of this decimal is, uh, for the decimal is 10, for the octal is 8. Octa means 8. Okay. So which means, which means only you can use 8 digits here. Which you can use 8 digits. Here, 10, 0 to 9, 10. Here you can use only 8 digits, which means 0 to 7. 0 to 7. You can you can use the range from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till 7. If you pick 8, then it won't come under octal format. Then it won't come under octal format. That goes to DC format. That goes to the decimal format. Okay. So when you are representing the, the integral data in octal format, you have to pick the numbers from octal number system. Octa means 8, which means 8 digits, so 0 to 7. You have to pick from 0 to 7. Okay. And and always remember, your when you are representing the data in octal format, it must have to start with 0. It has to start with 0. Okay. This is the reason decimal should not start with 0. If you start, for example, 20 is a decimal number. 20 is a decimal number where 0 to 0, 0 to 0, this is an octal number. This is a octal number because it is starting with 0. It is starting with 0. So, so when you represent 20, what you do? 2 into 10 plus 0 into 10. So, here you have to add the number of bits. How many values? It, is, it starts from 0, 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 2 into 10, it becomes 20 plus 0, this becomes 20, number 20, where in case of octal number format, it is starting with 0, so 0 will be ignored, this is a representation for octal format, so 2 into, so octal format is, it is, it is represented with 8, 2 into 8 plus 0 into 8, so, so you look at the, you look at the number of bits, it, it start from 0 and 1. So this is 0 and this is 1. So 2 into 8 plus 0 into 1, okay, 2 8s are 16 plus 0. The value of 0 to 0 will become 16, where here it becomes 20, where it becomes 20. So in the octal format, in the octal format, if you are taking the number, if you are, if you are representing the number, it must start with 0. It must start with zero. So any any number, for example, zero one zero, okay, or zero three double seven, or zero three four five two four five, something like this. But if I give zero one eight, zero one eight, this is not a valid octal number. This is not a valid octal number because the range of octal is 0 to 7. You have to pick the numbers between 0 and 7. You picked 8. You picked 8. This should fall under decimal and you are saying this is an octal number and it is exceeding the range. It is exceeding the range. Your compiler will your compiler will give error. Okay. So decimal means decimal means 10. Octal means 8. Octal means 8. The base you have to take it as 8. And the number range is 0 to 7. Okay. So, hexadecimal. Right. We have hexadecimal. So, when it comes to the hexadecimal. Right. How do we represent the hexadecimal value? Can you tell me what is the hexadecimal format? What is the base or radix of hexadecimal format? What would be the range or base for hexadecimal format? Decimal means 10. Octa means 8. Hexadecimal. Hexa means 16 is the 16 is the Okay, hexa means 16. Okay, deci means, please remember, it's not 0 to 6. Binary. 
binary by means two by means basis two okay decimal means or octal octa eight dc ten the base values okay hexa sixteen the base is sixteen if you want to represent the hexadecimal format the hexadecimal format so hexa means sixteen hexa means 16 right so when you are representing this hexadecimal format numbers right so the number range so the base is 16 base is 16 so the number range you have to choose from 0 to 9 0 to 9 and after that you 0 to 9 means 10 values right 10 values so remaining you have to you have to you have to represent like 10 11 12 something like this right for to represent that we will use the alphabets okay that is from capital a or small a to capital f or to small f this is the range the hexadecimal number range for example 0 9 sorry 0 1 2 and so on 9 if i want to represent 10 capital a i can use or small a i can use okay 11 capital b or small b 12 capital c or small c capital d so 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 okay so this is how we use 0 to 15 if you take it will be 16 numbers if you take 0 into the consideration okay See, small a you can use small a or small b or capital a or capital b anything anything so hexa means 16 but how do we represent this how do we represent a hexadecimal format number so how do we identify the hexadecimal format number simple so you know that a decimal means should not start with deci decimal decimal literal should not start with it should not start with zero octa it should start with zero it should start with zero right similarly hexadecimal numbers hexadecimal numbers has to start with zero capital x or zero small x zero capital x or zero small x and these numbers can have okay this when you say zero capital x or small x this can have zero to nine or it can you can use eight alphabets also you can use the alphabets also okay something like this 0x <clears throat> okay 0x 29 i can say so this value will be so 2 into 16 plus 9 into 16 so base power so base okay power will always start with 0 so 16 power 0 okay 16 power 1 2 into 16 plus 9 into anything power 0 is equal to 1 so 2 16 to 32 32 plus 9 so this becomes around 41 the value will be 41 this is how it is calculated so instead of 2 instead of 9 i can use a i can use a so a becomes 10 so now this becomes 10 so 32 plus 10 then then it becomes 42 or i can use b instead of that i can use c something like this you can have n numbers not not like only i am just changing this so 0 x 2 a c c b d and i cannot use g i cannot use g if i use g that is out of range that is out of range okay hexadecimal format is allowed only to use till f it either it can be a capital or small either it can be capital or small okay so 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 decimal will should not start with zero octal should start with zero hexadecimal should start with a zero x binary when it comes to binary binary means two binary means two the maximum allowed range the maximum allowed range is zero to one only these two numbers you have to use in the binary only these two numbers you have to use in the binary and when you are representing the binary format numbers it should it should start with zero capital b or zero small b zero capital b or zero small b okay this is the notation that is how your compiler 
understand these formats okay your integral literals can be represented in different formats or different number systems different number systems <clears throat> okay so when you are using binary so something like this 0b 1 0 i cannot use 2 when i use 2 it is not within this number range only 0 and 1 is allowed to use not 2 okay so now this becomes 1 into 2 plus 0 into 2 2 power 0 2 power 1 this the value will become 2 the value will become 2 something like this okay 0 b 0 0 1 something like this or 0 capital b 0 1 0 1 1 0 something like this okay then you have to do a conversion of it then you have to do a conversion of it <coughs> okay so these are integral literals decimal dc should not start with zero okay the number these are like regular numbers okay now octal must start with zero hexa zero x small x or zero capital x here the range of numbers is zero to seven here the range of number is okay 0 to 9 and then small capital A to capital A or small a to capital F to small f binary 0 B small b or capital B and the allowed number range is to use 0 to 1 here it is 0 to 9 so this is how you represent the represent the numbers okay and all of these numbers in any format you can assign it to the four types which is int sorry it is byte short int to long any of this any of these data types these formats can be assigned these formats can be assigned now what is the default type integer is the default type java picked java aspect int as the default type so it is not too less and it is not too high it will not consume high high memory high memory that's the reason java has chosen int as the default default data type for integral literals so any questions on this <clears throat> Any questions on this? Any questions? Okay. So let us do one small example for this. If no questions. We'll do a small example. We'll do one lap. I assume you guys were practicing this. If you practice, that would be easy for you. So I'll take a class. So the class name I'm just changing this to. Integral literals integral literals so here all the formats i'll define so int a i'll choose int a is equal to 10 int a is equal to 10 and i'm and i'm now printing the value now i'm trying to just print the a value that's it nothing else what would be the output can you guess for this can you give me the output What would be the output of this code? Okay. <clears throat> so I am not starting with a zero. The number I am not starting with a zero, right? So if it is not starting with a zero, then this becomes then this becomes decimal. So the range is the range is the range. 
the range of numbers I used is 0 and 1. Even though I used 0 and 1, I am not starting this literal value with 0b. So it doesn't become binary. It doesn't become binary. So this is a decimal value. This is a decimal value. The output will be 10. The output will be 10. Let me save this code. I'll save this code. And I'm opening the command prompt to compile the code. Java C integral literal start Java. Code has been compiled successfully, which means all the rules are being validated properly. Java. So the value, the output I got it as the output I got it as 10 because it's in the decimal format. The same class, the same class. Now I'll change this to 0b. I'm adding 0b here. So you see that I added 0b here. When I add 0b, this becomes, this becomes, okay, binary notation or binary format, binary format. So now this will be converted to a binary number. So internally it does this calculation. Okay, it uses the, the base or the radi radi radix as 2 and it does the calculation. It takes the number of, okay, it, it takes the positions of these numbers and based on that it does a calculation. Basically this value will come as 2. Compiling the code code has been compiled successfully now it is in the binary format it is in the binary format now if i if i just add zero in front of it if i add zero so i am adding zero so it is now converted to a octal format it is in it is in octal format so the number it should become as 8 The number is 8 as per the calculation. <clears throat> if I make it as 0x, 0x, this becomes hexadecimal format. This becomes hexadecimal format. So now you have to calculate it. So hexadecimal means 16. The base rate radix it will take a, or the base or the radix it will take a 16. So 16 power 1, this number will become 16. Compile the code execute the number becomes 16 because you look at that okay it is representing this 0x will represent that the 0x will represent it's a it's a hexadecimal format number it's the, the number format that we picked is hexadecimal format so your compiler or your interpreter understands that this is a valid one and you have to use base as 16 you have to use base as 16 to calculate Okay, so decimal, octal, binary, and hexadecimal. These are the formats that that integral literals that you can use. Okay, so similarly, the floating point also applies for the floating point literals. So the next literals that we have is floating point literals. So floating point literals, when we talk about floating point literals, the next literal types that we have left with is floating point. We are left with, we are left with floating point literals. So basically these can be assigned to either float or double type float or double type right so again the size of this float or double depends on the data type that you choose right the value if i am choosing one float value if i am choosing one one decimal value for example some point values if i am choosing based on the type that you choose 
based on the type you choose the memory will be allocated the memory will be allocated and and when it comes to the floating point type when it comes to the floating point type double is the default type java aspect double as the default data type default data type okay when you when it when it comes to floating point when it comes to floating point then double is the default data type okay so so one thing you can remember is okay when you are representing the double type data when you are representing the double type data so what you can do is you can add capital d or small d as a suffix suffix to the literal okay so when you are defining a float value when you are defining a float value so for example when you are when i am different when i am using the float type data type when i am using float data type and when i assign some point values to it okay you must have to define small f or capital f as a suffix to the literal if you don't add this then your compiler will think that the default type is double okay the default type is double so you are assigning the default type double value to the float it thinks that the double value are assigning to the float type which is double is higher type double is higher type so higher type value you are trying to assign it to the lower type you are assigning to the lower type and compiler will give you a problem compiler will give you a problem <laughs> okay so something like this when i take this so if i convert this float a is equal to when i'm using float a is equal to 0x 10 0x 10 now you will not have any problem because i am not defining any point values after after 0x 10 point i am not giving any point values here right no point values i am giving here let me try to compile this code has been compiled because because it treats this is a integer value integer value you are trying to assign it to the float right this is how the range is basically so you have byte then you have short then you have char then you can then you have int then long then you have float and then you have double okay so valid valid so byte value you can store inside short short value short type of data you can store inside char char type of data you can store in int int type of data you can short store in long long type data also you can store in float and float can be stored in double similarly byte can be stored in char byte can be stored in int byte can be stored in long byte can be stored in float byte can be stored in double short short can be stored in if i take short short can be stored in char okay it can store in int okay it can store in long it can go to the float or it you can uh, you can assign it to the double but but this is okay short storing the sto short value into byte is not allowed storing the short value into the byte is not allowed it is it applies the same rule for everything okay when it comes to the char you can move forward but not to the backward backward is not allowed backward is not allowed okay so int type data you can store in long so now int can be stored in float right as per this int can be stored in float 0x10 so then it is a number of 16 it's a integral type it's a integral data right it's a integral literal so this integer value i can store it in float i can store inside float so there is no problem so it will not give any problem but when i am trying to print that or when i am trying to execute the code it will add 0.0 to it 
since it's a float type since it's a float type it will add 0 0.02 data <coughs> do remember float type or double type even though you don't mention any point values it will add 0 0.0 at the end it will add 0 0.0 at the end <coughs> so now <coughs> as per this logic as per the logic what we have written here so this is a this is an integral integ integral integral type so which means it can be it's an integer type data integer type data integer type data can be stored inside float integer data integer type data can be stored inside float it is allowed now <clears throat> the same thing i'll keep 16.0 16.0 i am explicitly mentioning zero here okay the point value i am mentioning it here okay maybe one two 16.12 i am storing something like this now when i try to compile the code when i try to compile the code immediately you get a problem immediately you get a problem so you see that incompatible types incompatible types you are defining 16.12 you are defining 16.12 so because now what your compiler thinks that is this 16.12 is of double type it is of double type so you look at the chart what we have drawn just now <coughs> float can be stored in double float can be stored in double but double you can't store it backward it cannot traverse backward it cannot traverse right so it thinks that the value the value is of double type because because if you go to the <clears throat> double is the default data type that java has picked okay so by default if you are if you are representing the floating type data okay you must suffix that with either small f or capital f so if I wanted to say that, if I wanted to say that that's a float type data, that's a float type data, then in my code, I have to keep either capital F or small f. So now your compiler under understands, okay, this fellow is now representing the float type data here. Okay, it's not of double type. I'll not take it as a double type. It thinks that you by looking at this number f or this f value here, it thinks that okay he is representing the floating type data and he is trying to store inside float which and he is trying to print it and he is trying to print it that is how it understands okay that's a notation for your compiler that's a notation for your compiler to understand float type data so now the code has compiled <coughs> executed okay so if i don't if i don't mention this f if I don't mention this, yeah, the compiler knows that. Okay, if there is a point value, if I see that, I'll I'll come I'll just think this as a double type. The rule what your compiler knows is if I don't find this small f or capital f after the point values, I'll treat this as a double value. And double cannot be stored inside float, so you you violated the rule. Compiler is giving the the problem. Compiler is giving you the problem. So, which is a incompatible types, possible loss of conversion. So, which, okay, from double to float. So, which means whatever the value that you have, this is of double type and you are trying to store that inside float. You are trying to store that inside float, which means there is a chance of data loss. Possible loss of conversion in, indicates that there is a chance of data loss. It's a warning that it's a, it's a kind of error that your compiler is giving you. Okay, <clears throat> so when you are representing, when you are representing float type data, when you are representing float type data, you have to prefix that with either small f or capital F. If you are not doing that, by default it will convert, by default it will think, the compiler will think double as the default type, double as the default type. For integral, there is no such problem within the range the range is always considered okay if i take a byte and if i give 20 as the value okay it will convert it will take it as a byte value basically it look at the it will look at the range for integrals 
always it will look at the range always it will look at the range of the numbers so that table is very important if you know the table you know the complete rules and regulations of a variable data assignment variable data assignment so when i take byte and when i give 127 okay with is it within the range yes it is within the range 127 then it will allow then it will allow if it is 128 if it is on the range 128 then 128 value cannot fit in there so it thinks it's the default type it thinks as integer okay the next level it thinks as not short it will by default will take it as integer so your it will think that the integer type data you are storing inside byte and it, you will get a problem okay similarly in floating type in floating type okay double is the default type and double is the default type if you when you are representing the floating point numbers float type data you have to mention small f or capital f <coughs> okay either use small f or capital f both will work <coughs> executed okay when i change this to double when i change this to double okay i can mention capital d or small d i can mention capital d or i can mention small d i'm just trying to combine or even if i don't mention this small d also it is fine because the default type it takes as double the default type it takes as double and the data type that we are using double double value can be stored inside double so happily it will allow the rule is satisfied the compiler rule has been satisfied compiled successfully okay so that's about floating point literals okay Any questions on this, on the formats, on the formats or on the literals, any questions do you have? Any questions on literals? <clears throat> okay okay just practice this okay install if you have if you have computers install it if you don't have it you can go for an online compilers and you can you you can use the online play playgrounds basically in mobiles also you have these playgrounds if you have mo mobile apps also you can install i can suggest a few mobile apps you those who doesn't have the laptops they can install these compilers, mobile compilers, and you can use those mobile compilers. <clears throat> okay, so material will be provided for you on all these things. So I'm yet to prepare it <clears throat> for data types. I'll just verify that what are the values. By I'll make sure that by end of tomorrow you'll receive the material.
no other question we'll wind up this session for now and we'll meet again in tomorrow session thank you thank you everyone